The history of Java is that it was designed originally around a small uh, set-top box. And that was back when we thought the set-top box world was going to sort of take off. And we were, like many people in the industry, fairly early. The language itself is a derivative of C++. It's essentially C++ without the guns, knives, and, and mace, right? We, we went through C++ and we articulated all the things that were in there that we didn't like, that we thought would allow security problems of one kind or another. And by, by, using, by, by making these changes, we allow people to write applications which have three important properties. The first property is that the uh, application can um, uh, give you interactive content. And you've seen that demo, and we'll show you some of the new stuff in just a sec. The second thing that, um, that we do is we run a virus scan. What happens is the Java program comes in, and we do a byte scan. We also then run the Java program in its own interpreted space. We don't let the Java program do many of the classic virus kinds of behaviors. And finally, because of the way the language was designed and the virtual machine was implemented, that uh, system is uh, machine independent. So one of the consequences of this is that information is this sort of content platform. And now applications and information together can become the new, the new content platform. Now Java is to see what the net was for the microprocessor. Because it's machine independent and it is safe, you have the properties that you can write programs and they can be moved around. Now the examples that we've used have Java programs sitting on web servers and moving to the client. There's no reason why you cannot also have web servers where the program is authored into the web server. I believe that ultimately Java will be seen as a replacement for C++.